Hello everyone, I'm back doing another one of these. Previously, I discussed the stories that built Star Trek, the major inspirations Gene Roddenberry cited in the creation of Star Trek. Seeing as how my Star Trek retrospective series is wrapping up next month, and the next retrospective will be on Babylon 5, I decided to talk about the major inspirations J. Michael Straczynski pulled from to create Babylon 5. The first noteworthy inspiration isn't sci-fi at all, but an 80s cop drama, Hill Street Blues. At first glance, this highly influential series has little in common with the vast galactic epic of Babylon 5, but Straczynski has cited Hill Street Blues as a major influence, saying he wanted Babylon 5 to do for science fiction what Hill Street Blues did for cop shows. For the time, Hill Street Blues was seen as quite radical. It was gritty, violent, and morally grey. It featured an ensemble cast with multiple long-running storylines, which all intersected at various points and affected each other separately. Which is, of course, a big part of Babylon 5's storytelling style. When us fans think of Babylon 5, the first things which spring to mind may be the Shadows, the Minbari, and epic space battles, but just like Hill Street Blues, Babylon 5 is also a rich character drama. In fact, Michael Garibaldi, with his tough but fair approach to law enforcement, combined with his past of alcoholism and broken hearts, feels like he's ripped right out of a contemporary police drama. In fact, the whole reason Straczynski decided to create a sci-fi series set primarily on one space station was due to the influence of more mainstream dramas like Hill Street Blues, but also medical and courtroom dramas. Keeping to a space station rather than exploring strange new worlds every week came out of practicality. It's easier on the budget if a show mostly sticks to a handful of regular locations, rather than having to create new ones from week to week. And while it may not be immediately apparent, the fingerprints of these kinds of shows are all over Babylon 5. There are heavy overtones of military science fiction, yes, but oftentimes the substance of the drama would feel right at home in Law & Order or ER. For this video, I checked out a few episodes of Hill Street Blues and thoroughly enjoyed it. It feels surprisingly modern for an 80s show, and it's easy to see its influence on shows like The Wire. If gritty crime drama is your jam, I'd highly recommend checking this out. For a more overt sci-fi influence though, we come to The Lensman series by E.E. E. Smith, who also wrote the Skylark series, which was a major inspiration on Star Trek. In truth, Straczynski has cited many science fiction novel series as being an influence on Babylon 5. Isaac Asimov's Foundation series, Arthur C. Clarke's Childhood's End, Frank Herbert's Dune, and even J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings for a fantasy influence. Having read the Lensman series though, I think that's the series which had the biggest impact on Babylon 5. Lensman surrounds a conflict many billions of years in the making between two ancient alien races, the Aregians, largely peaceful with powerful mental abilities, and the Edorians, a tyrannical race bent on the pursuit of power. One can see this conflict as mirroring the one between the Shadows and the Vorlons. Both are trying to forge mighty galactic civilizations by manipulating the younger races. The Lensman series also has another similarity with Babylon 5 in how it's structured, though this may be fully coincidental. One of the things I find so satisfying about watching Babylon 5 is how its long-running story arcs aren't as clearly signposted as they are in modern shows. This is most likely a consequence of Straczynski trying to work around the episodic network television style of storytelling which was expected slash demanded at the time. Therefore, a lot of the setup for Babylon 5's big stories kind of slip in under the radar in what seem like Monster of the Week episodes. So when these elements reappear as part of a larger thread, it can be very surprising and strangely satisfying. Something similar happens in the Lensman series. While the first few chapters of the first book, Triplanetary, go into detail explaining the Aresian Adorian conflict, the majority of the book has little to do with it. Triplanetary really tells the story of humanity's first interplanetary war, where rival human factions have to band together against the Nevians. It reads like a classic classic pulpy space opera story, because it is, with the larger cosmic conflict having little impact on the immediate plot. Therefore, when several characters, or rather their family lines, become hugely important in the following books, you feel that sense of surprise and satisfaction. It's a solid book series, the writing style and characterization are very much of the times, it was written in the 30s and 40s after all, so it can come across as a little creaky here and there, but the overall story is fantastic. Weirdly, the Lensman series has seen an adaptation in animated form in Japan with a theatrical movie and TV series. The movie, Lensman Secret of the Lens, is a pretty loose adaptation of the books, mostly doing justice to the universe but reworking the characters and plot to be a bit more Star Wars-y. It's a decent wee space adventure, though not the best in terms of an adaptation in my opinion. The TV series Galactic Patrol Lensman I haven't seen because it's only available on VHS and Laserdisc and has never had a re-release, which makes it pretty difficult to track down. 
So unfortunately, I wasn't able to watch any of that show for this video, but if anyone has seen it, please let me know if it's any good. Our final big influence on another sci-fi one is the book The Demolished Man. I said in my previous video on Star Trek's influences how I really dislike clickbaity articles and videos accusing certain shows and movies of being rip-offs of other works. Oftentimes the standards for what is and isn't a rip-off is utterly ridiculous and betrays either a lack of knowledge of the genre's history or an unwillingness to engage with it. So when it comes to The Demolished Man and those who think Star Trek Picard quote-unquote ripped off Mass Effect, because they've never heard of H.P. Lovecraft, if you're also a Babylon 5 fan, try this one on for size. The Demolished Man is a police procedural set in a world where telepaths are commonplace. Telepaths are ranked according to class, with higher classes able to dominate junior classes. Telepathy is an inert, inheritable trait which can remain latent. When a person's telepathy manifests, they have to report to the Guild, which trains telepaths, enforces laws surrounding telepaths, and also creates more powerful telepaths through breeding programs. And did I mention the author of this book is called Alfred Bester? Yeah, J. Michael Straczynski basically lifted the entire world building of this novel, changed a couple of names around, and essentially dropped it into his own universe, which is totally fine. As I said in my previous video, there's nothing original under the sun. But by the standards of those insufferable clickbait articles, Straczynski basically ripped off this novel. But Telepaths and the Psychor in Babylon 5 is such a rich well of stories and really adds some texture to a space opera story. The Demolished Man is a terrific twisted novel, and I'd highly recommend Alfred Bester's work in general. The Star's My Destination is easily my personal favourite. Bester always manages to put some kind of a unique spin on familiar sci-fi tropes for some really interesting and weird stories. I'd highly recommend seeking out his work, because he's underrated among the pantheon of great science fiction authors in my opinion. And those are the stories that built Babylon 5. If you're a fan of the series, perhaps check out these works to see how they shaped the show. I certainly enjoy making these videos, and if you'd like to see more of these, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date on my new uploads. If you want to help the channel grow, join my patrons or my YouTube members, where you can see videos early, as well as some other exclusive content. Speaking of which, I'd like to quickly thank all of my patrons and members who are now appearing on screen. Have a good one, and as always, live long and prosper.